way, way overdue to get my fingers onto my perforatus because I've had them on the top shelf of the Blooming Alley since fall. This is their first winter outside and I've only ever just taken the pots and given them a little shake to see if there's still a little bit of liquid in the reservoir. So while they're down here, I'm gonna clean them up and check for pests because it is this time last year that I noticed the first spottings to arrive, which is a minuscule microscopic kind of scale. And I want to make sure that it doesn't repeat itself. So while they're down here, I'm gonna give you an update. And while I've been treating them, painting them at the base with garlic alcohol, in the viewfinder you have Perperata variety striata. And I'm fussing with my Backhäuserie back here because once the alcohol dries, you know, some bodies get left behind. And then just to double check, just to be on the safe side, I go over it again. I know the bodies are deceased, let's put it like that. But it just irritates me when I see little white specks. Anyway, so my Striata here, doing really, really well. She is the one that is performing the best, in my opinion, simply because I need to fill her reservoir a little bit more often compared to the other ones, meaning she is very, very busy, as you can see the new growth that for my conditions here started late summer, early fall, which was just totally out of what she normally does. Look at how it has performed throughout the past four months. Look at that. That is a fabulous growth. I'm very pleased. Beautiful sheath as well. And she is actively growing roots. So what I put into her reservoir today, even though the microfiber was still damp, when I squeezed it, I could release water. That means there is enough moisture in the pot and I really didn't need to add anything more. But seeing as she's going back up onto the top shelf for a while, I added a smidge of fertilized water, which is next to nothing considering that this pot is quite large. On to the next one, because I have three in total. Thank you so, so much for being here. It's so kind of you to click on this video to come and check out my preparatas with me. Now, you see this? This is what I'm talking about. This is the scale spotting they got in 2023. Very, very bizarre. For me, bizarre anyway, because back in that winter, all my preparatas were living inside. She is doing okay. She is actually one of my favorites of the three because of her colors and her fragrance being, oh my goodness, this very, very delicious dessert style of lemon sugar sherbet with cream. Divine fragrance, I have to say. So she is actually one of my favorites and one of my most reliable bloomers. She is in active root growth, but not as vigorous as the striata. And she doesn't need as much topping up in the reservoir because there's always seems to be enough and plenty in there. But the same with the striata, look at this. The growth started for me out of season, but for the purpurata it would appear it's doing exactly what it should because <laughs> look at that, amazing. Beautiful sheath as well. And these specks here, they are a bane in my existence. I try to joke about it, saying I've got Perperatus variety Dalmatian, but mm, it is very irritating. One thing, though, I am observing, this leaf, I don't like the color of it, but if the scale was down the middle vein, yeah, it's going to take a while, but eventually it's cutting off supply. You see, it's not the oldest leaf either. So anyway, my temperatures have dropped all the way down to eight degrees Celsius. On one night, I had a six degrees Celsius margin. And while cattleyas can do really well in those temperatures, normally it's because the day temperatures also rise exponentially to balance things out. And my day temperatures have not been very warm when the night temperatures were low. So to get a six degree low and the next day was only 13 degrees Celsius overcast, no light, that is not a good combination. That is not what they get out in nature. But again, it's a test. I have to see how they go. It helps me out tremendously not having to carry these orchids inside and out all the time. Of course, should I get anxious, and I'll show you an example right at the end, then I will definitely bring them in, C or C. 
I cut off the old dead pseudobulbs in the back because I could. There was nothing interfering with them. They were just rootless anyway, so I've tidied her up. And hopefully, at some point, we'll see her beautiful white blooms again. In the meantime, let me also show you my Purpurata variety Verkhäuseri striata, yes. <laughs> Sounds like I've got two of the same. No, one is the Verkhäuseri and the other one Verkhäuseri striata. I told you the Verkhäuseri is my favorite just because of the colors. And this would be the variety striata, which has a little bit more flair in the petals and sepals. Look at this. This is 2023. She is the least vigorous performer during these winter conditions compared to the other two because the growth that she started has only reached this size. However, what you can see here, it's going to be marginally bigger than the previous growth, which was very disappointing and surprising. But at least now we're coming back to a size that I'm accustomed to. If you look at her other growths in the past, that is the size I'm accustomed to, so that's good. What I wanted to do with you here now is just trim off this branching root system. I think it looks really messy, and these branches are dead. Once I've done that, I want to see if this straggly root that pokes up and is annoying me to no end, if that is dead as well, because then I can take it off. It is possible. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> Let me get you in closer. See how nice and white that is? Yeah, maybe I'll just leave it. But these other roots, these branching roots, it just looked tatty. I didn't like that at all. And this one, the reason I'm not taking off the back bulbs is because she is an active root growth. Yay! You see, I sprayed into the crevice there because that is where the little scale can hide, perpetuate themselves. And although it's been done, if the bodies are still white, I'm just going to do it again. But anyway, she's an active root growth and there is a root tip right by these old pseudobulbs, so I'm not taking them off. But let's see what she does whether she will improve with the growth here and if we're going to see a sheath. For the time being, she is not doing too badly. And the fact she's growing actively with her roots, <laughs> well, I couldn't ask for more considering what they're going through. I'm just making sure that nothing desiccates these root tips because she's going back up on the shelf as well. And while today I have a humidity of 82%, that doesn't mean it's gonna stay that way and keep the lecker out of the back bulbs so that the scale, if they want to perpetuate themselves down there, that they don't stand a chance because I'm gonna give them some airflow. We're not quite done yet. It's not a purpurata, but you see that beautiful color lurking down there. Let's get my Maxima up. I want to show her to you. It is so nice to have these blooms back, even though they are not perfection. You can see damp damage while in bud. All this is a little bit like it's not perfect. There's a teeny tiny bit of botrytis, I do believe, right there. And the blooms are not large at all. They should be, let's say, double the size normally if everything were to go well. But goodness me, I'm just glad that she bloomed. And you can see how weird the buds look in the back here. Now, these buds came out on a spike that were really, really long, and these are a little bit quetched in the sheath. You can see that there. And I'm concerned again about the paleness of them as I was with these buds when I showed them to you on a weekly update, but they turned out pink. Now, I'm not going to let her bloom out for very, very long. I'm just enjoying the blooms for a stint, and then I'll take them off to give her a rest because she is starting on a new growth again, on the growth that will not bloom. So we're going to make sure that she does well with that new growth. But you can see, this is what I was talking about, what I'm looking for, especially also with the purpuratas. But my Maxima is showing me that the night of six degrees was too cold. Now, as I mentioned, if the day temperatures rise enough, let's just say to about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius like they are today, then a night of six degrees is not an issue with these orchids. However, I also have a setup that encourages evaporative cooling with the LECA, so it's always dicey that these roots are never dry. If the roots were dry, wet dry cycle, then these temperatures wouldn't be so scary. But you see this? This is the anthocyanin produced from cold stress 
when it comes to the maxima. We also got a very yellow leaf right here, but that is also one of the older leaves. I'm not concerned about the yellow. I'm looking at the anthocyanin. So if I see in the forecast that, of course, anything goes below 10 degrees again, she has to come inside. Other than that, I am super, super happy with her performance. At least, let's just say, now I know that there is no way that she should be anywhere close to the six degree mark in my conditions based on my temperatures does not mean that it wouldn't work for you with a maxima because you get the highlands you get the lowlands and the highland maximas can really really take cold temperatures only if the days get warm enough but anyway it was mainly about my perparatus i just wanted to show off my beautiful maxima seeing as she is after all the foundation of my collection I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give it a like. I would appreciate it. It helps the channel out tremendously. And consider subscribing as well so as not to miss the blooms of the Perparatus when they come. I messed up my Verkhoisri blooming last year and I still cannot explain why. She bloomed and then she dumped her blooms within two days. Bloom duration should be three weeks. So I am hoping for a better result in 2024. It would be wonderful if you were here for that. Meanwhile, it was wonderful to have you for this video. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I wish you a fabulous day on the condition though that you stay safe. Take care, bye.